All right, in section 1.1, we did this sort of process on the board where we found something where we, got, let, we let things get closer and closer and closer to something else, right? That process of letting things get closer and closer to something else is a limiting process. So what a limit is, for what we're going to look at in this section, and we'll extend our definition later, a limit is a y value or a value. We're going to be looking at y values. But it is a value that you get close to. You approach it, but you may or may not actually get there. So the example that we did in the last section that's still on our board behind us, we never actually got to a slope of 14, right? We really got close, though. And if we had kept getting our vex x and y values closer to our point, it would have kept getting closer and closer. But we never actually really saw 14 pop up anywhere. It was just an approximation. So there are some notations associated with this. These three notations you will see used. This is read the limit of f of x as x approaches whatever comes next. So this first one says, this is the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the right. So when you see this positive sign right here, it's the positive side of your graph, right? It's the right-hand side, the positive x values, right, from the right. When you see this negative sign down here, you're approaching from the negative side of the graph, the left-hand side of the graph. So these are the x approaches, the x value you care about from the left-hand side. And then this is right here is the approaching from both sides. You're doing it both from the left and from the right at the same time. So if you kind of take a look, this is kind of cool that this is still on the board right behind us. But that's kind of what we did over here, right? We let the x values get close from the left right here. We let the x values get close from the right over here. And then we compared them, which means we did it from both directions. That's what limits are. They're values you get close to. You may or may not touch them. Often you do, but not always. You certainly don't have to. So I'll take just a minute longer and let you fill in these, these uh, pieces of information, and we're going to actually do some examples. So if it asks us to only do it from one side, we have You got it. Exactly. If it asks for only one side, you only have to do one side of that information. Mm-hmm. Okay, are we ready to go to the next slide? All right. A limit exists if and only if the corresponding one-sided limits, that's like the limit from the left and the limit from the right, also exist and are equal. So if the limits from both directions approach the same place, right, the ones that's on the board, they both approach the same value. Then we say that the limit exists for the whole function at that value itself, because the one-sided limits exist and they're the same. And we're going to do an example with a picture to show when that doesn't always happen, because it doesn't have to always happen. We're going to start with graphical limits. I am a visual person. So for me, this particular description is the one that fits my learning style the best. Okay. We'll do the numerical one next, and that might also hit some of you in a different way, and you're like, okay, that made more sense than the graphical one. That's okay. But we're looking at it from both perspectives. All right, so here's the first one. We have this graph. There's a disconnect in the graph, right? There's this jump in the middle of the graph. And as you can imagine, that jump is going to cause us some problems. That's why it's there, is so that we can actually see what happens. So we're going to go down this list of problems. Part A says that we're finding the limit what? What is this telling us? Approaching negative one from the positive side. That was very well stated. So the positive side's over here, right? And negative one is right here. And if we're approaching it, it means we're on the curve, not on the axes, not out in the middle of space somewhere. We're on the curve. So it doesn't really so much matter where you start, but you're going to be going like this along your curve. And you're going to keep going there until you get to an x equals negative 1 or as close as you possibly can, you know, without falling off the cliff, so to speak. And the question you ask yourself is, what y value am I getting really close to? And what would your answer be? 2. Right? 
as we get close to here and we get close to this open circle is what it is, this open circle resides at the point x equals negative 1, y equal 2. So I'm getting really close to the y value of 2. All right, how about the second one? What does this say? Right, x approaches negative 1 from the left side, the negative side of the graph. That's over here. So we've got to be on the curve, which is right here, and going towards the value of x equal negative 1. So we're moving towards x equal negative 1. Everything is about the x value that it tells you in the problem. So this is x equal negative 1. We're going to do x equal negative 2 in a minute. We're going to do x equals 0 in a minute, right? It's about that x value. So that's our focus. That's our ending point. That's our destination. Our destination is to hopefully arrive at x equal negative 1 from the left-hand side of our graph. What y value am I getting awfully close to as I approach x equal negative 1 from the left? 1. And as a matter of fact, I actually am at 1, right? I don't just get close to it on this one. I get there. I'm at 1. Now, part B, what does it mean? Or C, what does it mean? Part C means I'm supposed to be coming from both directions. So I'm coming down the curve over here on the right-hand side, and I'm coming straight across the curve on the left-hand side. And the question is, what happens? The limit doesn't exist. Do you know why? Or can you explain why? Because it's approaching different numbers from the positive and negative side. Good description. This limit won't exist. And if you go back to our definition over here, this is why. The two individual limits worked. We had them. But they weren't equal. So if they exist, which they have to exist, that's good. But if they're not equal, it's not enough. So if they approach different values from the left and from the right, the limit is said to not exist at that particular point. Okay, everybody good so far? Okay, we're going to change our direction a little bit because we're going to change, not direction, but we're going to change our x values. So let me clear off my graph because now the x value that I care about approaching is actually what? Negative 2. All right, so negative 2 is over here. And it doesn't have a plus or a minus on it, so sign on it, right? Like afterwards, it doesn't. So what does it mean if it doesn't have the plus or the minus after the negative 2? Both sides. It means I have to do it from both sides. So it's like I'm skipping part A and part B, and I'm jumping to part C from the get-go. That's what it really is, right? I'm jumping to part C immediately um, at a different x value. Okay, so my x value is negative 2. So we're going to go from the right, the positive side, and we're going to go from the left, the negative side. Now, again, it doesn't matter where you start. So if you decide to start up here on the right-hand side, that's totally cool. You keep going. But when you get to that open hole, you just jump, right? It's just like the child who's walking along, you know, the fountain outside, and they just jump off. No big deal. You just jumped off. It's part of walking across the street, you know? You just jump off the curve. So we're jumping off the curve, and we jump off, and we keep going down here because we haven't yet arrived or gotten really close to negative 2. So we just jump and we move. All right, so we're doing that. And then on the left-hand side, we're approaching kind of like we were before over here. So what happens on this one? On this one, do we approach the same y value? Yes, we do. And what is that y value? 1. So this limit does exist, and it's 1. OK, we're good with that? one more of these. If you're not catching something, please let me know so that I can try another description, okay? What value are we approaching this time? Zero. So zero is actually the y-axis, right? We're trying to get close to the y-axis. We're doing it from the positive side and from the negative side of the graph for the same reason as the last one. There's no sign after the zero. So on the positive side of the graph, I'm going towards x equals to 0. On the negative side of the graph, if I start down here on this line, that's fine, I can do that. But eventually I have to jump up, right? I have to jump up to the next level. That's okay. I just make the jump and I keep going because I'm not close enough to x equals 0 yet. If I approach x equals 0 from both sides, do I approach the same value? Yes. We're going to have to approximate because this is not crossing at a hash mark. Give me an approximate value you would say that this is crossing at. 
2.86, fantastic, we'll go with that. Whatever you'd like. It's approaching somewhere between two and a half and three, right? That's what it looks like. So we're somewhere in there, that's fine, okay? Any questions about graphical limits? All right, let me just say in a nutshell where we're headed and then we'll stop because we don't have time to get there. This next slide is gonna feel a lot like that last problem in section 1.1. You see those tables? Yeah, this is why. What we're going to do is we're going to use these tables, these x values, these y values to approximate limits. Now this is different because in the last section we used it to approximate slope, right? But here's the beauty of it. Finding a limit is quicker and easier than finding a slope. So this table will be much easier and quicker to fill in than the last table we did, okay? We'll stop there.